The service began with the declaration and the collect that God never fails to help and govern those whom God has set upon the sure foundation of his loving kindness. If all you had was the Old Testament lesson and the psalm, you wouldn't know that. And in fact, what both the Old Testament lesson and the psalm lay out are this relentless cycle of sin, judgment, retribution. Sin, judgment, retribution. And the author of 1 Kings makes this painfully clear that no one is in fact freed from that cycle, which is why in telling the story of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, coming in and in fact sacking Jerusalem, the very people that they would have thought would have escaped, mighty men of valor, the elite, there are all these categories that are listed that somehow, you know, if they were as anybody sort of on the pecking order that maybe God might be kind to in, a, in the midst of a situation like this, it would be those at the top. Um, and, but First Kings is real clear, no, no, they all go. And makes this incredible list of everyone from smiths to artisans to the king's household, including the king's mother. In other words, it's very, very inclusively specific. There's got to be something more, in other words, than the cry that comes out of the psalm in the face of this cycle. But Lord, we are your people. Go get them who are coming after us. Because that's really the content of what the psalm says. We don't get the answer to that cycle until verse 17 of chapter 8 of Matthew. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. It's only there, in other words, in the sacrificial death and resurrection of Jesus, that that terrible, horrible cycle of sin, judgment, Retribution is, in fact, completely broken. It's the only place in the universe where that cycle is completely broken. And that's actually what Matthew is trying to demonstrate in these miracle stories. Frederick Bruno, the New Testament scholar, helpfully calls these three miracles three outside miracles. And what he means by that is that in each case, these are people who, according to the law, were in fact deserving God's judgment. And one could have even said that the consequences of things like demon possession and the centurion who was outside of the covenant servant, all of those were in fact just bearing in their body this same cycle that was continuing to go. And Matthew makes the point of saying that's exactly where Jesus goes you see, to break that cycle, which is why at the top of the list is not a member of the elite or the king's household, but a leper, the one who more than in any other category would be considered entirely outside the covenant and in fact under the judgment of God. And so Matthew goes into extraordinary detail to talk about how Jesus literally breaks through, both in terms of what is exemplified in the faith of the centurion, I'm sorry, of the leper, as well as how Jesus responds. Notice what the leper says. First of all, he approaches him by literally falling on his face. Proskuneo, worship, kiss the hand. It is an act of obeisance, and it's exemplified in how he addresses Jesus. He calls Jesus Lord, not even Rabbi. He calls him Lord, all of which is meant to represent the fact that he actually gets who Jesus is. But notice, there's no presumption. He says, if you choose. He does not say, if you can. He knows he can. But instead, he says, if you choose, he recognizes that it is Jesus' decision, the Lord's decision, to heal or not. 
in this situation. He never steps, in other words, into the position of presumption and demand. He's confident. He approaches him. Something that is way outside the boundaries for even him to do. And yet, and acknowledging him as Lord, but never approaches him in a demanding way as if somehow he was the equal. He still says, if you choose, and notice, you can make me clean. A declaration of his lordship, the declaration of his complete power in this situation to make a difference. And yet, O oh Lord, you're the Lord and I'm not. And the call is entirely yours. Notice how Jesus responds. The first thing he does before he does anything is that he actually breaks the cycle by reaching out and touching the man. And in fact, in the Greek it means to grab. It's not just sort of putting his hand on his shoulder. He, he literally puts all of his hand on that leper's body. Can you imagine somebody with leprosy who probably, since he had contracted the disease, had never, ever been touched by anyone? Not only does he touch him, he says what he's doing by the touch. He says, I do choose. In other words, he takes the man at his word. He, in other words, if you can, yes, I can and I will. I do choose. And he says, be made clean. And immediately the leper was cleansed. The rest is the PS. I want other people to know about this. Notice he says, offer this as a testimony to them. In other words, go show them the fact that you have been healed. Make the offering be welcomed back into the community. You are no longer an outsider. You're an insider. But you're an insider who declares who I am and what I've done in your life. Everything about that just sort of sings to me. It sings to me because it breaks entirely the cycle of, God, are you paying attention and are you worthy? Or, God, I know you're out there, but are you actually concerned about me? Or worse, God, are you out there and are you, can, can you do anything about what's going on in my life? He says, I can. So this is an invitation, this gospel reading, to anyone who has ever felt like he or she was an outsider for whatever reason to come to call him Lord, to place ourselves in their hands and know that he will do just like he did with the leper. Reach out and touch our flesh and say, I can, because that's who he is. Breaking the cycle of sin, judgment, retribution, bearing the judgment and speaking forgiveness, mercy, and healing. Amen. Amen. Amen.